How do you feel about waiting? Do you enjoy a nice long wait? I don't like it. I don't like it when I have to stand in line at the bank or the post office. I don't like being at a stoplight sitting behind a driver when the light turns green. I don't like it when I pull into a gas station and all the pumps are occupied and I have to wait for someone else to pull away. How good are you at waiting? I thought I'd give us a pop quiz. I'm going to walk us through some scenarios and ask you to think about how you would respond. Here's the first one. You're at a checkout line at the grocery store you've popped into on your way to work. The elderly person in front of you is having an extended conversation with the cashier. Think for a moment about how you would respond. I'll walk you through a few possibilities. You're happy. You observe how nice it is that everyone's having a nice chat. You think about inviting the person in front of you and the cashier to meet for coffee when you get off work. <laughs> B. You think of things that you'd like to say to the cashier, maybe extend an invitation to Sunday morning worship. C. You while away the time waiting in line, developing your vocabulary by coming up with new and descriptive words that adequately express how you feel about the two people who will make you late for work. <laughs> okay, a second scenario. You've been waiting, sitting in the waiting room of your doctor's office for an hour. How do you respond? A. You're grateful for the chance to catch up on the 1993 Reader's Digest. <laughs> B, you tell the other patients you have a very highly contagious and fatal disease in, in an attempt to empty the waiting room. <laughs> or if you have a little more flair for the dramatic, C, you force yourself to hyperventilate to get immediate attention. <laughs> Now these are fairly casual kinds of waiting, but we put up with them. However, there are other more serious and difficult kinds of waiting. There's the excruciating waiting of a person for her or his health diagnosis. There's the waiting of someone who longs to have work that's meaningful and significant and seems to matter but it doesn't happen. There's the waiting of a partner who is trapped in a hurting relationship that seems unable to change. Lewis Meads puts it like this, waiting is our destiny. As creatures who cannot by themselves bring about what they hope for, we wait in the darkness for a flame we cannot light. We wait, we wait in the fear, with fear for a happy ending that we cannot write. We wait for a not yet that feels like a not ever. God seemed to be forever keeping people waiting in the Bible. Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years for a child after they had received the promise that Sarah would become pregnant. Noah and his family had to wait many days on a boat with a bunch of smelly and noisy animals in order for the floodwaters to recede. The Israelites had to wait for 40 years in the desert before they could enter the promised land. Jesus had one more command in Acts 1. He says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait. So they did. The disciples waited in the upper room until the Holy Spirit came. But biblical waiting is not passive waiting around for something or someone to come along that will allow you to escape from your trouble. People sometimes say, I'm just waiting on the Lord as an excuse 
not to face up to reality, to take appropriate action, or to own up to their responsibility. That's not what waiting on God is. I've heard of churches with horrible stewardship practices get into a huge money mess and say, we're waiting on God to provide. That's not biblical waiting. Waiting on God in this case does not mean sitting around hoping you will get a letter from the local bank saying bank error in your favor, collect $200. <laughs> that falls under the general theological, theological category of don't be stupid. <laughs> Waiting on God in this case probably means the church leadership deciding what is really necessary for ministry and what is a luxury item, and then getting back to the basic biblical principles of good stewardship. Biblical waiting is not passive. It's not a way to evade unpleasant reality. Waiting on God is a confident, disciplined, expectant, active, sometimes painful, clinging to God. Waiting on God is the continual daily decision to say, God, I will trust you even though the circumstances of my life are not turning out the way I want them to, and they may never turn out the way I want them to. I'm betting everything on you, God, and there is no plan B. That's waiting on God. It's the hardest work of hoping. 